The Reach is the second largest and the second wealthiest of the Seven Kingdoms, but second to none when it comes to its beauty and fertility. Life in the Reach is good. Everywhere you look, there's fields of gorgeous flowers, ripe fruit, or wheat as far as the eye can see. The land is so abundant that the Reach could easily feed their large population and still have enough to export to other areas. But the Reach is famous for more than just its crops. House Red Wine of the Arbor makes the world's most renowned wines, and many locations across the Reach breed the mighty Corsair Warhorses and the beautiful Destriers for jousting. The capital of the Reach is the city of Highgarden. Its courtyards are decorated with flowers and fountains and are always full with musicians and entertainers. Masquerades are held often, and if you have the money, you can even enjoy a nice relaxing boat ride along the rivers outside the city. There's also a super awesome hedge maze that is often the main event at festivals. In terms of its defense, Highgarden uses its high exterior walls with a large number of mounted Tyrell guards to protect from attack. The Reach is said to be the birthplace of chivalry, and nowhere else in Westeros is a knighthood held in higher regard. Knights are trained to be the ultimate fighters, but most of the current generation of knights from the Vale have yet to really see combat outside of the safety netted tournaments. But tested or not, the Reach easily has access to the largest number of knights in all of Westeros, most of which are hungry for battle and willing to put their lives on the line if it means a chance for honor and glory. While claiming to sport the warriors with the purest hearts, the Reach also trains the most educated minds, maesters who are counselors, healers, teachers, and just just general knowers of stuff all receive training at the Citadel in Old Town before they're assigned to a holding or keep throughout Westeros. The people of the Reach also seem to be the most progressive of the Seven Kingdoms. Women's clothing is more avant-garde and shows a little bit more skin, and while it's not explicitly said anywhere, I kind of get the impression that homosexuality is more accepted there. I mean, I don't think that there's annual gay pride parades through Highgarden. It's obviously still the Middle Ages, but I think more people are willing to turn a blind eye to it there, even if the same expectations of political marriages still apply. Thanks so much for watching, and charge that subscribe button because next time we're going to be meeting the Wardens of the South, House Terrell.